What is going on YouTube? Bryce builds it all, your favorite AMP, IA, and Part 147 instructor. Back with another video. This time I'm going to be demonstrating how to file a nick out of a propeller blade. Now, if you're new to the channel, these videos, I have a whole playlist of practical projects. These videos are aimed at students and aircraft mechanics getting ready to test their OMP to get their air, airframe and power plant certificates. Um, if you're not doing that and you are curious about how to file a nick out of a propeller blade well this might be helpful you to you anyways so as always i ask that you stick around real quick before i launch into the video everyone i just want to remind you and let you know that i do officially have new merch from fourth wall on the channel it should be right down below this video if not it is on my channel page if you want to get yourself a shirt a sticker a coffee cup a hat uh, whatever it may be with uh, some of my designs and stuff on it i would greatly appreciate it as always there is no pressure to buy Let's get All right, it. before I launch too far into this, I'm gonna talk about the, the, the procedure, the maintenance, the tooling, and all of that kind of stuff. And then I'm gonna move you to a first person point of view and I'll actually show you the nick and how to file the nick out. I've already got a nick inside this propeller blade. It's one of the ones we use up here at the school. It's had many nicks put in it over the years. So it's quite wavy. On a real aircraft, um, there probably wouldn't be any de deformation in this leading edge. You would just have the one nick, so it'd be a lot easier to see. That's kind of why I put this blue tape on here so we can see my nick is right here. But for the sake of this demonstration, I am going to be using the AC 4313-1B. It is chapter four, um, paragraph 871, it's where it starts, page 829. Now there is, I have gotten the comments. I see you in the comment section. Yes, AC 4313 is acceptable data and will probably get you past the oral and practical test. However, in the real world out there in the industry, you need to be following the propeller manufacturers um, instructions for blade blending or blade repairs as to what is acceptable and what is not. 4313 is not going to work out there in the field. You would be using, say, if you had a Hartzell propeller, you would be using Hartzell's instructions. Now, in my experience, Hartzell is really forthcoming with all of their maintenance data and all of their instructions. I don't know that this is a Hartzell blade. This is a blade. I don't know what it's from. Um, but Hartzell's, you know, they've got great maintenance data. So does Sess and Inch. So does uh, Macaulay, so do most of the manufacturers. So make sure you're following your manufacturer's data. If you got to pay for it, you got to pay for it. But now that that's out of the way, let's talk about some of the tools that I'm going to be using. The most common type of nick is a nick in the leading edge of the propeller blade. After that is it is a nick in the propeller face, which is actually the part facing me. If I was the pilot, this is the part that faces me. And this is the back right here. The curved side is the back, the flat side is the face, leading edge, trailing edge, cord line, just like a wing, okay? But the first tool that I'm going to be introducing to you is a half round file. Now for the sake of filing a nick like this on a propeller, a good single cut half round file. You don't need a double cut. This one happens to be a double cut, but it's all I had and the hanger will work. I will also occasionally see people grab a rat tail file or a tile of one of these. Again, single cut is all you need. The, they also make a smaller set of files where you've got the flat files, you've got half rounds, you've got squares, you've got whatever. Then they've got those small diamond cut files that you could use. I don't know what the designated mechanic examiner or DME is going to hand you. Now, in the real world, and you did not hear me say this, but in the real world, my favorite tool to use is one of these. No DME is going to let you use this, and at a Part 147 school, I'm not going to let my students use this. But this is a die grinder with a nice little Rolock or nylon pad on the end. And the nice thing about this, I got a little nick in the propeller blade here. I already know the limits, depending on what the manufacturer says. I can plug this into the air compressor, hit it with a little zzz, zzz, and get rid of that nick in about 30 seconds, 45 seconds. It's gone, it's cleaned, and it's burnished out. But I'm going to go through the process showing you how to do this. And I will go ahead and include a timestamp at this point. All right, I flipped you around to a first person point of view. Now I've got the propeller um, looking at it from the back. This is how it would be affixed to the aircraft. The cowling would be on that side. Um, and, and this is what you're gonna see. So I've drawn a little bit of a Sharpie mark in that nick and I've circled it. Now, according to my instructions, this is the beginning, this should be the end, and then this is my repair criteria. It tells me the maximum depth is 0.3 of the cord length. So if I measured the cord of the propeller at this cross section right here, my maximum would be 0.3. So my cord's probably about right there. 0.3 is obviously really, really deep. And then it tells me that I should match the contour of the blade. One of the biggest problems I see with my students is they, they file these off flat and there's just this flat nose right here. We don't want to do that. All right. Set you up on the tripod. I'm going to quit yapping and we're going to start filing. 
I'm gonna try to work around the camera here without bumping you too much. But I'm gonna take my half round file, round side down, and I'm just gonna start gently taking material away from the nick. And I'm just gonna start, like I said, gently taking material away from the nick. Now with the file, you wanna lift it up each time. Don't pull it back like this. Files work one direction. Unfortunately, this is one of those things that you learn with experience. I know seeing me file it is, is helpful and useful, but in truth, I say unto you, this is gonna be a lot better if you just practice, 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 practice. And I can, whoops, sorry, I bumped the camera. I can see it on camera, but you probably can't. So I'm just gonna draw a little ink in here, put a little ink inside the crack. It's still there, I can still see it. I'm just gonna keep going. The reason I like to use a half round, by the way, is a half round kind of automatically puts that little varnish in the propeller blade so that I'm not worried about the, the rounding of it. If I was trying to use a flat file, this would be considerably harder. So let me take you off the tripod and I'm gonna show you what I've been talking about. I've been filing for a minute now. And if you look, let me see if I can do this. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. If you look, you see that little black mark that nick is still ever so slightly present. And if I run my finger now, I can still see it. So I'm just gonna keep on filing away at this and filing away at this and filing away at this until I get it all gone. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, I'm kind of following the propeller's contour and just taking a little bit at a time with each stroke and sort of working my way over the propeller blade. I think I just about got it with that one. Okay, and I'm trying to keep all of my file marks going in this direction. Now I'm pretty sure the nick is out, so I'm gonna move on. Ah, nope, I need one more. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step here in just a second. I'm not pushing down with a lot of force. I'm just, you know, one thumb sort of pushing on the prop or on the file. You don't need to force the file into the propeller with a whole bunch of force. Just a little bit here, a little bit there, we'll do it. Okay, now we're gonna move on to step two. Step two, I've got my nick filed out. I've matched the contour as best as I can with the file. Um, with that half round, if I take the tripod off and get you a little bit closer, you can, I kind of put the tape back here for some contrast. You can see that little bit of a divot left behind from where the nick was. It's very important that all your corners are rounded, that it rounds down into the nick, and that it rounds up out of the nick. And I'll just draw much larger on the propeller blade. So like if this is my leading edge right here, my leading edge right here, you wanna round down into the nick and then round back up out of the nick. You don't want a hard edge like that, right? You want a nice rounded edge down into the nick until it's all gone. But now that this is done, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna take this tape, I'm gonna move it, put some tape right here, and then I'm gonna put some tape on this other side. And now I'm gonna take some 80 grit sandpaper, or sorry, 180 grit sandpaper, and I'm gonna start sanding all of these file marks out so that it's nice and smooth. I did put the tape here. If this was a certified aircraft and not a piece of training equipment for the school, I don't wanna mess up the paint on the propeller unless I absolutely have to. So by putting a little bit of tape around the damage, I can sand it off. And when I get to the paint, the or the, the tape, the sandpaper is gonna stop when I get to the tape. So now that I got this done, I'll take this in here and I'm just gonna start sanding like this until all the file marks are gone. And this part is probably gonna take longer than the actual filing did because you're going to be sitting here going back and forth like this for quite a bit of time now again moderate pressure on your thumb on your finger sort of push into the propeller blade and sand this away now my hand is covering all this so really all you're seeing is my hand go back and forth but as you can see those marks are starting to go away more and more and more Anyways, i'm just going to keep sanding down on this when I'm done with 180 grit, I'll be back. It took me probably a solid 10 minutes off of camera, file, sanding with the 180 first this way, and this the way, and then this way again, 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 until I got the result that I wanted. So now that I've used the 180, I am gonna go ahead and step up, and you can't see it because it's stuck together, but this is actually some 
400 right here. It's kind of nasty on one side, but still good on the other side. So I'm gonna take some 400 and I'm gonna do the exact same thing I just did. I'm just gonna come in here with the 400 and keep sanding away until I like the result. And this is gonna clean this edge up and make it look nice and shiny. And again, this is something that I would do for a while until the edge is nice and shiny and there is no sign of any damage left behind. So to surmise everything, make sure you have yourself a good half round file. You can always get away with using these smaller ones. This is another half round file. It's just a little bit smaller. Make sure you're following the figure in your 4313. I'll maybe flash that up from the iPad. Make sure that you're filing out those edges and make sure you're sanding things down. That is another reason that out there in the field, I do prefer to just use a die grinder with a nylon pad, but you need to be very careful with this not to go too far. But with the nylon pad, I don't have to sand it when I'm done. This leaves a pretty nice edge on the propeller blade when I'm finished, so I don't have to sand it down and get it nice and smooth. But that's going to do it about all for this one. If you like the video, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, gentle reminder, once again, I do now have t-shirts, stickers, coffee caps, hats, mugs. I'm no longer using Teespring. I had some people order stuff from Teespring and the quality just wasn't all that great. So I've moved on to a new supplier called Fourth Wall. Uh, so make sure you get one of those. I'm proud of a couple of the designs that I came up with. Um, and that's going to do it all for this video. So as always, go build something and be easy.